If you haven't watched the previous laws 1 through 16, I highly suggest that you do so. Links are in the description. Law 17 is cultivate an air of unpredictability. Well, back in the 1920s, Picasso and his art dealer Paul Rosenberg had a really strange relationship. At first, Picasso let Rosenberg do whatever he wanted with his paintings, but then suddenly, out of nowhere, stopped giving Rosenberg any new work to sell. Rosenberg was totally surprised and didn't know what was going on. He didn't know if Picasso found a new dealer or if he was just being difficult. Meanwhile, Picasso just kept doing his thing, sleeping and working as usual. After a while, Rosenberg tried to make things better by offering to pay way more money just to keep the partnership going. There's an interesting quote in the book which says, Nothing is more terrifying than the sudden and unpredictable. The enlightened ruler is so mysterious that he rests in non-action above, just like Picasso, and his ministers tremble below. Next is Law 18, which is do not build fortresses to defend yourself. Isolation is dangerous. This law is observed from the powerful Shi Huan Ti, who was the first emperor of China. He had a massive palace with hundreds of pavilions and underground tunnels connecting different rooms. However, later in his life, he became paranoid about his enemies and isolated himself so much that he rarely appeared in public and used the tunnels to sleep in different rooms every night because he feared assassination. Well, his isolation led to loss of power and his eunuchs and ministers took advantage of this and did whatever they wanted, even plotting against him. In the end, he was an emperor in name only and barely anyone knew of his death. Isolation is dangerous. If someone encourages your isolation, their intentions might not be the best for you. But what could be the best for you is Law 19, which is know who you're dealing with. Do not offend the wrong person. During the 13th century, Muhammad, who was the king of Khwarezm, was a powerful dude. Genghis Khan, who was then a young leader, sent a convoy and reached out to Muhammad with an offer to share the Silk Route to Europe and establish peace between their empires. While well, Muhammad was insulted that someone relatively unknown considered themselves equals to his majesty and had the Khan's envoy executed and shaved the heads of the ambassadors. Well, this made the Mongols furious because there was a grave insult if you shaved a Mongol's head. Over the next year, the young Genghis led a series of attacks, managed to overthrow the powerful Muhammad who fled and died, making Genghis Khan the sole master of the empire, the Silk Route and most of Northern Asia. This is a great example to always know who you're dealing with and never offend the wrong person. Next is Law 20, which is do not commit to anyone. In ancient China, the kingdom of Qin invaded the kingdom of Xiang. So a nearby ruler named Huan wanted to help, but his advisor told him to wait. The advisor said if Qin was still strong, they couldn't make a difference, and helping a state in danger is more easily forgotten than the revival of a broken one. The advisor knew not to commit to anything when emotions are involved. Well, Huan listened, waited until the forces became exhausted, and then he helped Xiang and conquered Qin. Don't side with the stronger or weaker group. Play the waiting game. Learn to control your emotions and avoid getting involved in other people's conflicts unnecessarily. Following is Law 21, which is play a sucker to catch a sucker. In 1865, Otto von Bismarck, a Prussian counselor, aimed to have Austria sign a treaty that solely benefited Prussia. He discovered that the Austrian negotiator, Count Blom, was an avid card player and challenged him to a game of Kinze. Bismarck played recklessly and acted like an absolute fool, leading Blom to think that a simple dude like Bismarck is incapable of deception and just went on to sign the treaty without reading the fine print. Well, as the ink dried, Bismarck said that he couldn't believe an Austrian diplomat would ever sign the document. The best way to be well received by everyone is to clothe yourself in the skin of the dumbest person in the room. Law 22 is transform weakness into power, use surrender tactic. This law is explained by the story of this king named Go Jian, who suffered a horrible defeat from the ruler of Wu. Instead of running away and hiding, Go Jian's advisor had a bold idea, surrender to the ruler of Wu. And that's exactly what Go Jian did. 
From a king, he ended up working in the lowest position in the stables for three years, gathering intel and plotting his revenge. After three years of being humbled, the ruler of Wu was satisfied with Gu Jin's loyalty and let him back to go home. But when the kingdom of Wu was weakened by internal turmoil, Gu Jin attacked and won easily. The ruler of Wu was defeated and he took his own life and his heirs were exiled. The lesson here is simple. If you can't win the battle, don't fight it. Wait for the right moment to strike when the odds are in your favor. Next is law 23, which is concentrate your forces. This is best seen from the king of Wu and his minister. Despite his minister's advice to pull back his armies, the king of Wu continued the war against the Middle Kingdom in the north. Seeing that the army was dissipated and fearing a southern invasion, the minister sent his son away. The king saw this as betrayal and executed him. However, as predicted, Yu invaded in the south and surrounded Wu. The king, remembering the words of his minister, took his own life with his hand on his eyes to avoid the minister's judgment in the afterlife. We can clearly see that overreaching has caused many of the biggest kingdoms to fall in the past. And overreaching and dissipating your focus and powers will most likely lead to your downfall as well. Law 24 is play the perfect courtier. Well, Alexander the Great wanted a philosopher to discuss philosophy with him during his campaigns. His teacher, the famous Aristotle, recommended Callisthenes, but he was more interested in pure philosophy than being a courtier. On one such campaign, Callisthenes spoke his mind one too many times and Alexander had him put to death. You see, many today dismiss court life you know, as a relic of the past, a historical curiosity, but in the realm of power this is not true. When you look around, there may be no more sun kings, but there is still plenty of people who believe the sun revolves around them. So it's your choice if you will be like Callisthenes or you will learn and apply the principles of courtiership. Law 25 is recreate yourself. The book says that you should not accept the roles that society foists on you. You have the power to forge a new identity that commands attention, just like Gaius Julius Caesar did. You see, he was a skilled horseman and played the leading man in warfare, always urging his soldiers on and positioning himself in the center. He organized events like chariot races and gladiator fights to enhance his public image. Like Caesar, learn to enlarge your actions and forge an identity that people will respect. You do not have to conform to what society thinks of you. You have the ability to remake yourself into a powerful character, so be the master of your own image rather than letting others define it for you. Law 26 is keep your hands clean. This is best seen from the story of the Queen Cleopatra. Back in 59 BC, when she was around 10, she witnessed family conflicts for the Egyptian throne. Following the sequence of bloody conflicts, family betrayals and rebellion from the people, she learned her lesson that no one would serve a queen who was seen murdering her own kind. So, in pursuit of the throne, Unlike her older sister, who banished her father and locked her sisters to rule alone but was later ousted by the people, she kept her hands clean. She went to Julius Caesar and poured on her feminine charms. Caesar restored her to power and took care of business by locking up her sisters and eliminating her enemies without getting her hands dirty, leaving her accepted by the people to rule and restore Egypt to its former glory. She knew that in the world of power, mistakes happen but it's the wise ones who keep them hidden. Law 27 is play on people's need to believe. Back in the 1700s, there was this Swiss doctor who gained a following for his natural remedies that tasted good and made patients feel better. Michael Schupach didn't rely on traditional medicine, but he rather played on people's desire to believe that nature was healing them. He became powerful not because of his remedies, but because he understood people's need to believe in something. Today, people are not so interested in the truth about change. They don't want to hear that the results came from hard work, habits or patience, but they are dying to believe in shortcuts, outwardly manifestations and get-rich-quick schemes. You can use this law to play on people's need to believe or to protect yourself from falling prey to sketchy companies, social media celebrities and gurus and their false promises. Law 28, this is one of my favorite laws, is enter action with boldness. 
In 1925, there was a conman named Count Victor Lustig, who pretended to be a government official. Well, he convinced some scrap metal dealers that the government planned to tear down the Eiffel Tower and that they could make an offer to buy it. One guy named Monsieur P was selected and went on to write a $1 million check for the tower. But, you know, he started to get suspicious during the meeting. Lustig noticed this and instead of backing down, he asked for even more money. He said that his salary in this government was low and Monsieur P was relieved. Everything clicked. He was a government official asking for bribe, gave him extra money along with the million dollar check. When entering any action in business or in life, timidity is dangerous. Everyone admires the bold, no one honors the timid. Next is law number 29, which is plan all the way to the end. This law is best observed from the story of the king of Tartary and the wise Abdul. Well, once the king of Tartary made a wise Abdel on the roadside who offered to give a good advice for a hundred dinars. The king paid and received the advice, never begin anything until you have reflected what will be the end of it. The king took the advice to heart and even had it written in gold on the walls. Years later, a plotter bribed his surgeon to put poison in the blade and assassinate the king and in return he will be made prime minister. But before the surgeon thrusted the poison dagger, he saw the Abdel's advice on the wall and realized that the plotter can easily kill him and not fulfill his bargain. The plot was exposed, the plotter seized and executed. So when planning any action, make sure to foresee all possible consequences, obstacles and twists of fate with as much clarity as the gods on Mount Olympus who see the end of all things. That was pretty poetic. But we go on to law 30, which is make your accomplishments seem effortless. Harry Houdini, the renowned escape artist and magician, amazed audiences with his incredible feats of escape. He jumped into icy waters with his arms and legs tight, wriggled out of straight jackets while hanging in the air and was submerged himself underwater while shackled for almost an hour. Houdini never revealed his methods and left no clues to how he accomplished his impossible acts and this appeared like magic to the audience. However, as we both know, Houdini's power were not magic, but rather the result of his dedication to studying locks and mechanics and mastering his breathing. Try to keep your effort and your tricks to yourself and you seem to have the grace and ease of a god. But when you boast about how much work went into something, the magic is gone. Next is law number 31, which is get others to play with the cards you deal. Even the terrible recognized the need to reform Russia, but faced opposition from the boyars. They were the highest ranking nobility. Some of the boyars even fled to neighboring countries, putting Russia on the brink of war with the Tartars. Even needed absolute power to achieve victory and there was a seemingly impossible request. So to terrify the Muscovians, he left all of the kingdom's treasures on the city square and left Moscow for 30 days. People were scared, and despite their pleas for him to return, he refused. Eventually, delegates from the church and the people begged him to come back and he offered them a choice. Either he rules with total power or they find a new leader. And faced with a threat of civil war, the people agreed, even won total command and he defeated his enemies. The words freedom, options and choice suggest a power of possibility beyond what they offer. Be careful, the best deceptions are the ones that seem to give the other person a choice. But you have the choice to listen to Law 32, which is play on people's fantasies. And this is an interesting fable of the Lion King and the Stag. It was a sad day in the animal kingdom as the lion lost his queen. He ordered a day of mourning and requested everyone to show allegiance by offering consolation. Animals from far and wide gathered to share the sorrow and as soon as everyone arrived, the sorrowful king gave way to crying roar which filled the cave. Following his lead, all of the courtiers roared in their own respective tones, all but the stag. He shed no tears, I mean, how could he? The death of the lioness avenged him as he formerly strangled his wife and son. The king was informed of this treachery and bursted in rage. Do you dare to laugh as everyone else around you weeps? We will not tolerate traitors in this kingdom. And asked for the brave wolf to slaughter the stag. 
but before doing so, the stag yelled, My king, the time for weeping is over. The queen spoke to me. She was laying on a bed of roses in the Elysian fields. She asked to seize this funeral as up there she tasted a thousand delights. Hearing this, the king was pleasured, and instead of punishing the stag, he showered him with gifts. Play on people's fantasies or be careful being played on yourself. Avoid shortcuts, tricks and charming lies, because if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is.